glad that you're here. I feel like today is a really special Sunday. And I know for one thing, we had some ease in our schedule, didn't we? With those clocks, uh, now we're back, and, and everything just seems easier. And then, you know what? If we don't watch it, we're doing the last minute scramble to get out the door anyway, am I right? Can I get a witness? Okay, some people know exactly how I operate. <laughs> they probably operate the same way. I'm so glad that you're here. I'm glad that you're worshiping with us online. Um, and it is a special day. This is uh, All Saints Sunday. And so friends, um, we wrote about this in the bulletin. I never want people to walk in and uh, be unprepared. But this is a time when we remember our loved ones who have passed away in the previous year. Not, not, that's not the whole service. It's not a funeral by any means. But it's a way of remembering how their lives touched ours. So, you know, sometimes tears come in this service. Sometimes we just have a moment. And I think um, it's a time when we feel especially close to God and the people that we love. So I'm glad that you're here. Um, I feel like I could say this is a very special Sunday for every Sunday now through the end of the year. Uh, next week is our faith celebration brunch, so we won't have Sunday school, and we're going to eat together for the first time in uh, over a year and a half, so we've got a lot to celebrate. You'll hear more about that in a little bit. And then the, the third Sunday of November is UMW Sunday, so Terry will will um, be leading in worship along with all the other United Methodist women. Um, and that will be a really special Sunday full of lots of singing. So, uh, and then Thanksgiving, and then we roll right into Advent. And if you don't know, Advent is that season of four weeks before Christmas where we are preparing our hearts and minds for Christmas. Yes, I said the C word already. Christmas. Um, I've seen lots of memes about how it's not, Christmas isn't going to be the same. All our gifts are going to be stuck on a truck somewhere. And then other people say, well, that's not really what Christmas is all about. They're right. Um, but we can't just jump right into Christmas. We need that season of Advent to prepare. So I'm glad that you're here. And as your schedule allows, keep coming back and celebrating and worshiping and connecting with God and with our church family. Will you stand as you're able and let's join in the call to worship. Grace to you and peace from God. Hallelujah. Ooh, you're woken up this morning. I like it. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God is in us. And God's love is perfected in us. So we give God thanks for all the saints living and dead, who, who go before us and teach us 
we move into the time of worship where we're remembering the saints, we have um, five listed there that were members of our church. But I know that, that you hold many others in your heart, and um, as, as do I. So this is a time when we remember uh, the saints. And, and the Protestant meaning of saints is a little bit different from the Catholic meaning, so I don't want you all to be confused. Catholics have, if they call somebody a saint, they've gone through this process of beatification, and um, they're, they're very special. Protestants, and this, this comes from the New Testament, think that all Christians are saints. So that means that anybody that you knew that encouraged you in your life of faith, maybe your mom or dad, grandma or grandpa, Sunday school teacher, neighbor, anybody could be a saint as we understand it um, in, in the New Testament meaning. So I know you'll be thinking of all of them. We're going to do a kind of responsive prayer, and I'll say uh, some words, and then you have a response. It's going to be on the screen, and it's printed in your um, And then we're going to take some time to remember those uh, saints in our lives. Let's pray. Ever-living God, this day revives in us memories of loved ones who are no more. What happiness we shared when they walked among us. What joy when loving and being loved, we lived our lives together. Their memory is a blessing forever. Oh God, uh, months or our years may have passed, and still we feel near to them. Our hearts yearn for them. And though the bitter grief Donald Long. And Peggy Clem. I invite you to be thinking of the memories that you share as we listen to this special.
beautiful thing. Thank you. You know what I realized? Uh, there's no where on this piece of paper that says children's time. <laughs> but we, we don't need a piece of paper, do we, guys? So I'm going to just invite our kiddos to come on up. Look at 
what she's doing. And they thought, well, two pennies, that's not very much. What do you do? But Jesus said, no, she gave everything that she had. She didn't have any more pennies. You don't have any more pennies in your pockets, do you? Zero pennies in your pockets. Okay. Yes. Uh-huh. It's important to talk with your kids about the money that uh, they earn through chores or their allowance and how they can give some to the church if they choose, if you want to do that. So, you know, is it stuck? But that's pretty tricky. Or they can stick them to their fingers. Maybe even to her forehead. I don't know what's happening up here. Yes, they're balancing. All right. Well, hold your pennies in your hands and let's say our prayer, and then I have a treat for you. Okay? All right. Friends, will you help us pray? Dear God, Dear God thanks for loving us. Thanks for loving us. Help us to give generously. Help us to give generously. As you have given to us. We pray in Jesus' name.
Jesus called his disciples over and said, the truth is, that this poor widow gave more to the collection than all the others put together. I couldn't even keep a clean 
and to allow God to provide, to give all that I had, and to trust that God was working on something bigger, something better. Well, when this story, uh, I read it from Mark's Gospel, it's also told in Luke's Gospel, when it takes place, I want you to use your sacred imagination. Jesus was in the area of the Jerusalem temple called the Court of the Women. It's sort of an outer courtyard. Everybody can pass through, women and men, but it's called the Court of the Women. And in this area, there were seven collection boxes that the worshipers could uh, deposit their temple tax into. See, they, they knew, the, the religious authorities knew what people made, and they kind of taxed them accordingly. So we've got some, we've got three offering baskets around here. Uh, imagine that there were seven lining this courtyard, and that is for the required temple tax. And then there were six more big boxes um, just for free will offerings, like the one this woman gave. So 13 in this court. And, and Jesus sat watching as all the wealthy worshipers, they made a great show of placing their required tax money in the boxes. I've got a box here, put my money in. That's what they would do. If I just put the money in, you, know, you don't even know how to hear it. They would make a big show so that everybody knew how much they were putting in. So can, can, can you picture the scene? Think of it. The, the outer courtyard of the temple is a busy and a noisy place. Um, can, so imagine the hustle and bustle of people going by. The, the, there were animals around, um, lambs that were going to be sacrificed. So there's, there's uh, the buying of the animals and, the, and, the, and um, there were the cries of the lame and the needy people that needed help. They were begging. Um, and, and people are you know, happy to see their friends, so they greet their friends, their fellow worshipers, and, they, and maybe they're jostling to get a good seat before the first hymn is sung. Something like that. And then, quietly, slowly but surely, a widow woman makes her way across the courtyard, and she slips her offering into one of the free will collection boxes. She's too poor to even have a required temple tax levied against her. And her coins are, are too small and light to even make a sound as she deposits them. And yet, she gives. It does not go unnoticed. The master, the teacher, the rabbi, Jesus, pays attention. And then Jesus not only noticed this, but he makes sure that his disciples don't miss it either. So this widow, not only poor, but she had few resources for making money. And think of it, her small gift was a real sacrifice, but she gave it willingly. In contrast to the way most of us handle our money, this widow gave all she had to live on. And Jesus noticed and admired her generosity and her sacrificial giving. In the Lord's eyes, this woman gave more than all the other people put together, though her gift was by far the smallest. Um, that widow's mind, small, poorly made coin, worth about two pennies, <coughs> sure what they called it then, um, not pennies. But Jesus recognized its true value. You see, that the value of a gift is not determined by the amount, but by the spirit in which it was given. A gift that's given grudgingly for recognition <laughs> loses some of its value. So when you give, Remember that any gift of any size is pleasing to God. When, when those gifts are given out of gratitude, a, a spirit of generosity. Jesus spent a lot of time teaching his disciples what truly matters. In the Gospel of John, chapter 10, verse 10, Jesus said, I came that you might have life and have it abundantly. And he wasn't talking about having an abundance of possessions or uh, an abundance of wealth. In fact, Jesus cautions us against storing up treasure on earth where thieves can break in and steal, where moths and rust consume. 
Instead, of, we are to store up treasure in heaven. Well, you might be thinking to yourself, hey, treasure in heaven sounds all very nice for Jesus to talk about, but I've got financial obligations. I've got my family to take care of. I've got bills to pay. And I like my independence, and I'm just not quite sure if I've got enough faith in God to pay my bills. I know. I know. Because I felt the same way. And yet, there is something deep in my heart that inspired me to give. And friends, I know there is some impulse deep in each person's heart that, that in some way that we are wired to care about other people, other human beings, and this world that we all share, it inspires us to give, even if it doesn't make logical sense. And so, I responded to my pastor's story of that widow woman who, who gave it all. I thought about, I could just put in a dollar, that's pretty much most of it. I could put in the 37 cents. I could really not put in anything and just take this into my heart. But with fear and trembling, I put my entire dollar 37 in the offering plate and, and sat back to see what would happen. And, you know, I wish I could tell you that I acted with boldness, but really, I felt very humble, very small, and very grateful as, as I waited for the heavens to crack open and lightning to strike. Well, you know, that didn't happen. But God was working. I got another job. A friend volunteered to take care of my young boys so I could work while my daughter was in school. A, a woman that I hardly knew from church showed up at my house with several new outfits so I could look presentable for my new job instead of wearing my mom uniform of, of sweatshirts and, and blue jeans. And another friend gave me shoes, lots of shoes. You know, life is hard. God is good. That's what I call this message. That's how I think of it. Um, as time passed, my financial situation remained precarious. Uh, we were making it, but barely. Um, but I kept on trusting God, giving my small offering each week, and living gratefully and, and in awe of all the ways that God was working in my life. And in time, my pastor encouraged me to tell my story of faith, to study God's Word, to, to step forward boldly into the future that God had planned for me. And when it became clear that God was calling me to go to seminary, to become a pastor and help others, I was ready. I wondered how the bills would be paid, but I didn't worry because I knew that God would take care of that. In fact, some dear friends in, in my home church made it possible for me to go. They said if I was willing to take that step, they would pay the tuition. And so I moved my family to Kansas City, uh, away from my wonderful home church, and um, went to seminary at St. Paul School of Theology. And, you know, earning that Master's of Divinity degree, that's, that seems like a huge step. But see, God had prepared me by taking these small steps all the way along, that series of baby steps that increased my faith, answered my prayers. And along the way, I learned some important things about giving. I want to share uh, just three of them with you today. First of all, giving draws us closer to God. We serve a giving God who gives generously to us. John 3.16 reminds us that God so loved the world that he gave his only son. You know that verse. Through our giving, we are learning to love as God loves us, making us more able to relate to what God's character is really like. We are created in God's image 
I think that's why we're wired to give generously as God gives. And you know what? The second thing I learned is that giving strengthens our faith. God uses our time and our money to, to, to test and stretch our faith more than any other means. God promises to take care of all our needs. But God asks us to step out in faith first because God really wants our faith to grow. It's impossible to please God without faith. Indeed, it's impossible to be saved without faith. And finally, the last thing I want to share today is that giving blesses us in return. The more generous that we are with our time and our talent and our money, the more time and talent and money are just poured into us. Giving reminds us that, that happiness is not something that can be purchased. So, I put my dollar thirty-seven into the offering plate, willingly, humbly, gratefully, and God blessed it and answered my prayers. And most surprising of all, within a week, I received not one, not two, but three vacuum cleaners. <laughs> <laughs> to replace that broken one. I learned that God is always working for good in the world and in my life. I mean, yes, I definitely lifted that vacuum cleaner situation up to God in prayer. The key is to, what to focus on that makes all the difference. Yes, life is hard. Yes, God is good all the time. God is good. Every time we're in the month of November, I, I think of um, stories like that. Of, of, you know, it's just such a month of, of focusing on gratefulness, thankfulness, generosity, all of those things. Um, we're not going to, I have a group here at the church that um, we've been focusing on generosity for a whole year. We've taken classes, we've read books, we've uh, discussed, and we decided we're not going to have a heavy handed pledge
Blessed are you, Lord our God, creator and sovereign of the universe. You love the world so much that you gave your only son, Jesus Christ, to be our Savior. He suffered and died for the sin of the world. He raised him from the dead so that we too might have new life. He ascended to be with you in glory, and according to his promise, is with us always. On the night that he offered himself up for us, Jesus took bread. He gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, he gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we ask you to accept our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, which we offer in union with Christ's sacrifice for us as a living and holy surrender of ourselves. Send the power of the Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts that in the breaking of the bread and the sharing of this cup, we may know the presence of the living Christ, be one body in Him, cleansed by His blood, faithfully serve Him in the world, and look forward to His coming and final victory. Through Him, with Him, in Him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours. Almighty God, now and forever. I invite you to share in the, in the bread, the wafer, and the cup.
celebrate with you. Please bring your family and friends with you too to join the celebration. Again, that's next Sunday, November 14th at 10.30 a.m., immediately following church service. In the fellowship hall, in the lower level of the church, we'll be having a catered meal for you to enjoy with your family and friends. Mark your calendars, bring your friends, and come hungry. We hope to see you there. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.